there is this massive disconnect that has existed between gamers and AAA games for what feels like a lifetime now, whether it's games like Anthem or Cyberpunk 2077, all lasting from the last generation consoles, the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, and then going further into the early generations of these next generation consoles that we've had. The things have felt like they've gotten better. There's still a long road ahead to regain the faith of the player bases back to some of these major franchises. And there's a lot of innovation that needs to happen. There's a lot of quality that needs to be delivered. And I believe that Final Fantasy 16 is one of those steps in that long road. I think Final Fantasy 16 is going to be a generational game. Something that we haven't seen in a really long time. I want to preface this discussion with something that, well, I wrote in my very first video that I ever made on this channel, at least one of my first essays that I ever put on this channel. Everybody's opinion on what a Final Fantasy game is or isn't is completely different depending on the person that you ask. Some people are going to say that it's a game that has turn-based combat. Other people are going to say it's a game that has incredible music and anime-like features. Other people will say it has to have Moogles and it's probably about crystals. But at the end of the day, nobody's opinion on what a Final Fantasy game is or isn't ever converges on one singular solution. It's a series that has always evolved, from iteration to iteration. Final Fantasy III introduced the iconic job system. Final Fantasy IV focused on storytelling, transforming the series into the narrative-driven experiences that we are all used to from every Final Fantasy game most of us have played. Final Fantasy VI dived into that even deeper with more dynamic storytelling, telling split adventures between different heroes. Final Fantasy VII brought us killer limit breaks and refined the Magicite system into the Materia system and allowed more freedom in character roles. Final Fantasy VIII had its insanely crazy and weird junction system. Final Fantasy X introduced more innovations in the sphere grid, and storytelling, and cutscenes, and more. Everything continues to get better. Everything continues to change. Everything continues to evolve. And this has always been the name of the game when it comes to Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy was a series that was specifically made to save a dying company. It's in the name Final Fantasy. It's why they named that in the first place. It was their Final Fantasy. There's been a lot of pushback in people calling Final Fantasy 16 not a Final Fantasy game, specifically because it's action-oriented combat and the changing in a, lo a lot of the different themes. And I can understand not wanting to see something that you love and something that you're familiar with change. However, it's been 10 years since, it's been over 10 years since Final Fantasy 10. It's been over 10 years since Final Fantasy was relevant. There is an entire generation of gamers that have no idea what peak Final Fantasy looks like, what peak Final Fantasy sounds like. There's an entire generation of gamers that have grown up on action games, first-person shooters, third-person shooters, and the like, Fortnite, whatever you name it. This is the game that they want. This is the game that they need. This is going to be their first toe into the franchise. And the reason I'm making this video is because if you don't play Final Fantasy games, and this is your first Final Fantasy, or if you don't know anything about this team that is making Final Fantasy 16, then you just don't know how special this game is. Look, we've been spoiled in 2023. Games have actually been good for once, which has been absolutely incredible. I thought that Elden Ring was going to be the last good game I'd ever play in my entire life, to be honest with you. Hogwarts Legacy was pretty solid. Resident Evil 4 was an absolute beaut. Diablo, Blizzard actually putting out a complete and good game. Wow. Hats off. Now we have Final Fantasy 16. Next, we're going to have Baldur's Gate 3. After that, we're going to have Starfield. The list continues to go on, and the rest of the years continues to look good. But Final Fantasy 16 specifically is the game that I am the most excited for, and the reason why is because... I believe Final Fantasy 16 is not only just a major step for the industry as a whole, I don't think it's just a major step for Square Enix as a whole. I think that Final Fantasy 16 is going to be a generational title. One that is going to have a lasting impact not only on the industry itself, but on the players. And stop it right there. I'm sure some of you in the comment section were about to say, wait a minute, Final Fantasy hasn't been relevant since, you know, 10 years ago. Well, have you heard about the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy? Yes, I play Final Fantasy XIV. I love Final Fantasy XIV. The whole reason I'm making this video is because I'm going to talk about the team behind Final Fantasy XIV. I don't need to take extra time out to talk to you guys about my obsessions with Yastola. Boo. I'll talk to you later.
Final Fantasy 16 has been my most anticipated title of 2023, and it honestly has been my most anticipated game since its initial reveal. I'm a Final Fantasy fan, through and through. So, while my take is biased, I'm hoping that it reaches as many people as possible because there is something incredibly special about this game and the team that's behind it. I want to communicate it to as many people as possible. Final Fantasy 16 is a divisive among the Final Fantasy community, however, I believe it to be the title that is going to bring the mainline series, the mainline Final Fantasy series, back to its former greatness. You've seen videos in the past, or heck, you're from the past, talking about the heyday of AAA games, like back when Bungie was developing Halo 1 and 2, these passionate teams, these passionate projects, making games not with profit in mind, but with the player in mind. These selfish projects where they were making games for themselves to play. Something very much that's reflected in the indie gaming market today. Creative Business Unit 3, the team behind Final Fantasy XIV and Final Fantasy XVI, is just that. A rare mix of people that are making games for themselves. These are those heyday developers of old. However, it's not just they're making them for themselves, it's also this undying devotion to the players, the heart of Final Fantasy, and those who are impacted by the games that they make. I'm going to give you a little bit of background. We'll call it a deep dive. That's a little strong. Uh, like, like a toe in the pool. So it's a real shallow dive. It's not even a dive. You're not even getting in the pool. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the people that are working on the game so you have a better understanding on why... These people are so important and why it is so great that these are the folks that are working on the game and why you can trust this team specifically more than anybody to make a great game. And I'm of the mind, and this is something that I've adopted over the last few years just because of how bad some of these AAA overlords have been lately, but I don't trust companies. I trust teams. When I find teams that make games that I enjoy, those are the teams that I follow. Those are the teams that I choose to buy games from. This is a team that I will always buy a game from. I'm going to go ahead and start things off at the top G himself, the main man, Naoki Yoshida, the producer for Final Fantasy 16 and Final Fantasy 14. He's been a employee of the company for over 20 years, and he is known as the savior of Final Fantasy 14. He is the one man that transformed a complete failure of a game into one of the most popular MMOs of all time. If you guys haven't seen the Noclip documentary on Final Fantasy XIV, I would 100% say that you need to go and watch it because it, one, is just an incredible feat to see just how they took this complete mess of a game and then convinced the company to allow them to fix the issues with the game while secretly developing an entirely new game at the exact same time. This ambitious plan of his resulted in one of the biggest turnarounds in gaming history. Yoshida is not just a developer or a producer. He is a true gamer at heart, and he values the response from the fan base. He wants to see our love for the game, and he enjoys that the most. He's one of the only developers that I've ever seen actually get emotional for the fan base, and it's not some weird PR thing. No, it's because this man genuinely wants us to love the game, and he wants to make sure that he is meeting on the expectations of the fan base. I remember back in Endwalker, where they had to make a two-week delay for, for, the latest, for the latest expansion, and... When he was going to make that that announcement, the dude just broke down right there on camera in front of thousands and thousands of fans because he was just so sad that he had to let the fan base down. This is something that we never see from other AAA developers. We don't see this level of transparency. We don't le we don't see this level of human. Yoshida has commented many times on the struggles of the mainline Final Fantasy series, and he hopes that Final Fantasy 16 is going to be that game that's going to raise them back to that major name of prominence. This is a man with a major passion for making games and a major passion for Final Fantasy. And the crazy thing is, is this is his first Final Fantasy game. This is his first game project that he gets to start himself. This isn't I'm cleaning up after somebody else. This isn't I'm, an, I'm playing a supportive role for another game like what he did with Dragon Quest. No, this is Naoki Yoshida making his own game. And this is something this man is taking very, very seriously. Now, the next person I'd like to bring up is Kazuto Yomahiro. He is the mainline story director for Final Fantasy 16. He is also the mainline story director for Final Fantasy 14's award-winning expansion, Heavensward. If you talk to anybody that has played that expansion, they will give you raving reviews. It is probably the best experience, the best narrative experience I've ever had in any MMO period. Heck, it's one of the best narrative experiences in any game I've ever played at all. 
This is somebody that knows how to pace a story. This is somebody that knows how to create memorable characters. Or Chiffon. This is somebody that knows how to make a world that you want to be a part of, that you want to experience, that you want to remember. And the crazy thing is, he's been working on Final Fantasy 16 since the end of that expansion. This story is going to be an absolute banger. The next guy I'd like to talk about is Koji Fox, and he's the localization director for Final Fantasy 16 as well as Final Fantasy 14. and his role goes far beyond just simple language translation. It actually goes far deeper than that. One of the things that he's doing right now, or he has done for Final Fantasy 16, is he wanted to make sure that this game was helping to target Western audiences. And by doing that, what they did is, is they actually made this script and translated this script from an English speaking perspective first. So all of the lip syncing that we're gonna see in the game is actually from English speaking people rather than being translated or dubbed by Japanese. This is a really interesting tactic and it really tells you that they're really trying to make this one of the most successful Final Fantasy games that they've ever made. And honestly, I feel like this is something that not only as a player makes for a more immersive environment, it also just feels like the right thing for them to do to try to make sure that this game really reaches a very wide and large audience. I also want to add in as a side note that Koji also plays in Final Fantasy XIV's live band, The Primals. Yeah, yeah, this uh, team, yeah, they have a band. They play on stage in front of the fans because they love us. Now for the next guy, this is an interesting one. He is not somebody from Final Fantasy XVI. No, he is somebody from Capcom, somebody that worked over 20 years at Capcom working on Devil May Cry, working on Dragon's Dogma, and other games as well. This is the combat director for Final Fantasy 16. So their changeover to action combat in Final Fantasy 16 isn't a haphazard one. This is an absolute conscious decision to make sure that they have the most fluid combat they could possibly have for Final Fantasy 16. And if you guys have watched any of the trailers, if you guys watched the pre-launch party, this game is smooth. If you guys have played the demo, this game is smooth. And having him a part of this team, especially going forward for future Final Fantasy games as well, is huge. I actually can't wait to see what else they put this guy on next because I want to see more action-oriented action RPGs from Square Enix. I feel like this is a great direction for them to go in. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't mind seeing them make, oh, I don't know, like a... Final Fantasy Souls-like or Dragon's Dogma-like game. Which takes me to the last key player. The pillar of this game. Something that is going to lead to an experience that if you have not played Final Fantasy XIV, um, I, I just don't know of any other game that quite does music as right as Final Fantasy XIV does. Something that it's almost difficult to really describe how good it is. It's not simple as, oh, this is a really good track, or, oh, man, this music's fantastic. No, it goes beyond that. It's something that really engages you into story moments. It's something that really engages you into the combat. Soken is somebody that has made some of the most incredible music scores for Square Enix than, honestly, any of the other guys that they've had. Don't get me wrong, they also have some pretty fantastic people at the same time a lot of their games have honestly that's what final fantasy is known for some of the best music in gaming i mean come on but this guy is top tier i mean he takes a game like final fantasy 14 an mmo and makes it feel like you're actually a part of the combat a game that has relatively slower inputs than most games you'd ever play but you feel like you're riding the line on almost every single fight you're a part of and this is somebody that has dedication that we just don't normally see from, honestly, anybody in gaming. And for him specifically, it's just his story that makes me so happy to see him a part of this team. He's somebody that at one point in time kept it from all of his co-workers and his workers that he was suffering from cancer. And back during COVID, when they had a major expansion, Endwalker, that was coming out relatively soon... He ended up being admitted to the hospital. This broke his best friend's heart, Naoki Yoshida. And 
the only thing that he asked for, the one thing that he wanted was to make the fan base happy. He wanted the fans to be happy because he felt that the happiness of the fans was something that, well, it gave him strength. So Square Enix met his demands. They provided him all the equipment he needed in his hospital room to be able to produce the music that was needed for the next expansion in Final Fantasy XIV. This is somebody that is so dedicated to their craft and so damn good at it. The music that you're going to experience in this game is beyond anything that you've probably experienced in the past. And honestly, it's something that I don't necessarily know if I'm ready for. And during their pre-launch party, he even discussed something that they did very unique to Final Fantasy 16, and I think this is absolutely incredible. They realized that everybody's fighting style, some of us are faster, some of us are slower, some of us like using heavy attacks, some of us like using light attacks, but they've made it a way where the music is going to form to the actions that we take, every move that we make, every time we down an enemy or down a boss or transition into another phase, everything musically will be seamless. Immersing us further into an amazing story, amazing combat, and a beautiful world. This game is going to be so special to a lot of people and definitely special to me. So why did you make this video? Why did you go over all of this stuff? Why did you talk about all these guys? And to be honest with you, I'm just so damn happy to share these people with the folks that can't play MMOs or aren't interested in playing MMOs or aren't interested in playing Final Fantasy turn-based games or anything like that. This is a really special team of people, and it's honestly something that we just don't get a lot of from a lot of other developers. And it's something we need to cherish. It's something that we need to look forward to. And it's something we have to really, really hope succeeds. Because folks like this are the people that give us the games at the quality that we honestly deserve for the money that we spend. These are people that genuinely care about our experience with their games because they share that same experience themselves. I can't wait for this game to release. And once it has, <laughs> honestly, I don't know how I'm going to put it down. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I, one of the first videos I ever did was actually pretty similar to this. Uh, I kind of went over the, these team members and whatnot like that, but with all the hype building for Final Fantasy XIV, or 16, sorry, with everything that's going on, with me also kind of wanting to transition a little bit away from making constantly nothing but Diablo 4 related videos. I really wanted to communicate to my audience, specifically the folks that watch my videos, and hopefully all the people that ended up watching this as well, that this is going to be an incredible experience. And it's something that I want to make sure that I'm sharing with as many people as I possibly can. This isn't some simple action game. This isn't some simple JRPG. This is a passion project made by masters of their craft that are incredibly dedicated to giving us one of the best gaming experiences we've ever had. And I'm pretty sure they're going to deliver. See you guys next time.